viewers and listeners, sir. Okay. Uh, originally Ghanaian born, came to the States when I was seven years old. Um, was fortunate enough to, you know, play American football. Uh, went to University of Nebraska, got drafted in the fifth round to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, played six years in the league. Um, now turned coach, man. And, uh, glory to the Lord, man, for, you know, the journey um, in which he's brought me through to get to the point that I am right now, man. So that's just a little bit uh, about myself. Amen. Now, um, Coach Asante, so um, I came to uh, America from Ghana when I was just before I turned six. Um, and I know, like, for me playing basketball, you know, I faced a lot of prejudice, a lot of name calling, because I was typically like the only African kid on a basketball court rather than a soccer field. Um, yep. Was football your first sport? No, I, I, you know, we all played soccer back in Ghana. Um, so when I came here to the States, you know, soccer was, uh, was my first sport. Um, I was actually sorted out by a basketball coach. Um, he saw me running around in, in my neighborhood back in Virginia and I was just so much faster than other kids. Um, and, uh, you know, he kind of recruited me. Um, like, Hey man, you need to try football. You need to try basketball, man, because God has blessed you with a talent. And, uh, you know, uh, surely, you know, I, I kind of followed his lead. And uh, uh, years later, man, it landed me in the national. Beautiful. Now, I'm definitely going to have my mom listen to <laughs> listen to that part because it's funny. My, my, my career path for sports was kind of similar, except basketball was my first sport, but then, um, a Detroit police athletic or pal league uh, coach recruited me for football and tried to pull me for the basketball court because me, I could jump higher than everybody else my age group. And uh, my mom, in her words, I still remember those words to this day because my mom, she spoke Chui and some other Ghanaian dialects, but she said, uh, hey, Kofi, um, oh, um, uh, ne kasiye? And then football. And, oh, I, oh, and that just crushed me, man. <laughs> I took my skinny self back to the basketball court. And uh, the rest was history, man. I was, you know, I probably should have maybe been more persistent, but my mom was an old school uh Johnny and Pence. So how did how did your mom like how did your mom handle you playing football? You know, um my uncle calls football foosball, Jimmy Four, he okay, Jimmy Four Ball. That's what he calls it. Um, but to be honest, you have to be a very, very intelligent person. Um, you have to be super sharp in order to yeah. play the game of football. It's, it's, it's very, very, uh, uh, it's an intellectual game. You know, um, my mom, my very first year playing organized football, uh, I broke my elbow. Um, I broke my elbow. I broke it like it broke. You still see the scar from the surgery. Um, so, you know, being from, you know, um, an African uh, family, you know, we came here to the States, you know, to be doctors and lawyers. That's that's all they believe in, doctors, doctors and lawyers. So um, my mom was like, oh, this is probably a sign that you shouldn't be playing this game. Yada yada yada, you know. But my father was my, my father spoke a different voice. My father was like, "Hey man, listen, if this is what you want to do, man, chase your dreams." He was a little bit different, you know. Um, oh, wow. My mom was like, "Hey, look, you should just focus on your books. Uh, go, go to school, get a degree, you know, get a good job. Uh, maybe you should just leave this football thing alone. Your first year playing, you broke your elbow, and I was out for the whole season. It was the very first play too. But my father was like, "Hey, look, listen, I know this was like a freak accident, you know. I know you love the game." Um, just chase your dreams. And there was always like a still voice, man, that kept talking to me. And I know it was the spirit of the Lord. Um, it kept telling me, man, just to keep pursuing and keep and keep chasing my dreams, man, never to give up. And not let, you know, there's one incident of me breaking my elbow, you know, stop me from pursuing and chasing, you know, um, the, this, this, this dream. And I'm glad I listened to that voice um, because, I mean, there's no telling, uh, you know, where I would be now if I didn't follow that voice, you know. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I know, you know, the Lord blesses us with 
multiple gifts and, and, and talents sometimes, but it's always good to, you know, follow, you know, listen to your heart or hearts and, and do what you, you know you're good at. You know, and not just what you're good at, but what you enjoy doing. You know, of course. Just blessed to do what they enjoy doing, you know, it's, it's real, uh, it's real beautiful to watch. Now, take us back to, to high school. Um, did you experience any prejudice on or off the football field, or were you just fortunate enough to avoid all that? Uh, I wish I could say I was fortunate enough to avoid all of that. Um, but that was definitely not the case, you know. Um, my, um, my high school coach. You know, um, he didn't like me very much uh, because uh, my older brother, you know, decided not to play football um, his junior year. And he was he was pretty good, very talented, big, strong guy. Uh, so when I came from middle school to high school, the coach already kind of had it out for me because of my older brother, you know, um, and being African or whatnot. It wasn't like he had that same uh, whatever prejudice towards uh, the African-American kids. No, nah, it was just. It was it was more sore towards the African guys. Mm. Um, so, you know, I I experienced that prejudice um, when I uh, when I when I came to high school, and you know, <laughs> one incident we had a guy get hurt, and uh, I played uh, pr primarily running back in high school, and uh, we had a cornerback get hurt, and he was looking for guys to try that corner. I could play any position out there on the football field except for offensive line or defensive line, and uh, he was trying guys out at the cornerback position. So I went over there. He's he, he made an announcement, if you think you can play corner, come over here and we're going to look at guys. So I went over there and he was like, Asante, what are you doing over here? Uh, you're not an athlete. Uh, what, what, get out of here. And he was like, and, 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 and it came out of his mouth. He was like, you're not, you're not, you're not good enough to play Division One football. What, you're not, what are you doing here? So imagine if I didn't have like strong parents, you know, at home and a coach, somebody that's in position, somebody's in a place of authority. To say that to a 14 year old kid, you know, it could have crushed my. It can break me, yeah. It could have broke me. And I, I could have listened to that, to, to that negative voice, and uh, it could have potentially, potentially, you know, hurt me, you know, um, and me pursuing my dreams if I would listen to his voice. But I was like, man, you must be outside your dog on mine. I know what I have. I know what God put in me, man, and I'm gonna keep pursuing this dream. And funny story is, you know, um, my parents ended up having a little bit of you know complications, so I ended up going to go I had the opportunity to stay or go at my old high school my my, uh, my uh, senior year and I chose to go to uh, the rival school across the across the uh, across the road um so I went and stayed with my dad my senior year and we got an opportunity to play against my old high school and we beat him like 48 to like three I scored like five touchdowns it was crazy after the game you know trying to come up to me shake my hand I'm like man get your butt out of here man you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, we, we good man I'm the same guy that you said wasn't good enough to play Division One football, and mm -hmm. ended up not just playing Division One football, ended up getting drafted. So nowadays, you know, people back home in Virginia, you know, he's going around saying, "Oh, oh, that's my guy," and you know, I, I coached him and you know, I taught him, you know, da 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 da. And it's true, he did teach me. You know, what I'm saying he did teach me hard work, discipline, you know, toughness, because that was my first year playing football. You know, what I'm saying in high school, I, I couldn't, I wasn't fortunate enough to play little league. You know, what I'm saying because of my family dynamics, my parents were always working. So he was my very first kid, and he did teach me toughness. But at the same time, too, he's the same person that talked down upon me. So when it came time for me to, you know, when the opportunity came, I just left and came back and whooped his whooped his butt. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And and it's interesting, you know, how you know certain coaches, you know, would try to take credit for so much. I mean, for example, I ran track for the top high school track program in the whole state of Michigan, Detroit Cass Tech, and. I, I didn't make the Olympics, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. I mean, the, the, I had the best coach. Our coach still holds a lot of track and field records that's almost 40 years old. I, I didn't make the Olympics once again, so it's not just what a coach can teach you. You have to apply yourself. You have to have the talent. It's a combination of things with so that player or athlete has to make it happen, too. So you got to get the athlete. Um, the credit. Now, were you a one sport star in high school or did you also run track? Oh, <laughs> I did it all, man. I played, I played, I played football, played basketball, and ran track. Okay. Now, um, did that benefit you in college when you got to Nebraska or, or it just didn't really uh, impact you in either way? 
It did. It did because you know basketball teaches you a lot of uh, a lot of movement skills that you need on the football field, and um, you know track and field teaches you you know how, how to run. Um, so you know I would encourage all my young athletes out there, man, to stay involved, man. Um, be playing sports all throughout the year because it definitely helps um, with with your main sport when you get when you do get to your main sport and staying conditioned and staying fit. You know, being able to jump basketball, uh, being a DB, being able to go up and compete um, for the ball when the ball's in the air, shuffle it, just being able to go side to side. And then, you know, being able to run, um, whether it's track, whether it's even a baseball, being able to track the ball. Um, all of that helps, man. All of that helps, man. Uh, soccer, footwork. So whatever it might be, man, um, whatever sport you're into, I would say, man, get involved in, 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 multiple, in multiple sports. It definitely okay. um, helps uh, with your main sport. Okay. Now, um, you know, I get a lot of um, – DMs from young Ghanaian uh, high school basketball players that want to come to America and try out U.S. junior colleges, U.S. colleges. What advice would you give student athletes in Ghana that want to make the jump over here? You know, um, I would tell them, man, to just 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 keep perfecting their craft, man. And, you know, however way they can, you know, uh, get working, whether it's YouTubing, you know, what guys are doing out here for them to, you know, just keep learning and perfecting their craft. You know, one thing that God has actually uh, put on my heart is, you know, to be able to go back to, you know, Ghana and, you know, start some kind of academy and catch them at, and catch them at a young age. Because, you know, if you wait till you're in high school or even get ready to go to college to, you know, play a sport, it's, it's tough. You know, kids here in America have been playing ever since they were, like, super young and super small. So um, a lot of times, man, you know, you make plays just off of experience and you've seen a play so many times. Um and you need that experience. You need that experience. Um, my rookie year, we had uh, we had uh, we had a, a defensive tackle. Uh, his name was Don So. Um, came from University of Ghana. Big guy, six five, about three hundred forty pounds. Yeah. Probably stronger than everybody. You know what I'm saying? Probably stronger than everybody. You know. And if he would have been like born here in the states and played football when he was younger, uh... he would have ended up getting cut for the team because just the experience wasn't there. Physically, he had it but the experience just wasn't there, you know? And that's what I'm seeing with a lot of these guys that, you know, would DM me, you know, talking about opportunities to be able to play football. And I'm asking them all kinds of questions. Um, you know, you know, how long have you played, you know, uh, uh, the experience level, you know, um, you, you might come out here and be bigger, stronger and faster than some of these kids, but these kids have been playing and just off experience and technique they they'll be better than you. Mm -hmm. So, my thing would be, man, just to, you know, keep striving, striving, and you have to make up for, you know, experience. Uh, so that, that comes with practice and hard work and dedication. Uh, but nothing is impossible. Um, and, and, and they can achieve anything. But it, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of work. My thing is, you know, to give them a fair advantage, you know, people like us, we have to go back and reach them at a younger age and let them, you know, develop like a football league where, little league where, you know, they can start playing when they're seven years old, just like some of these kids out here. They'll start playing when they're seven years old yeah. so they can actually get the experience, um, get the knowledge of the game. And then, you know, if they, if they have the opportunity to be able to make the leap and come over here, it'll be the, the playing level, the playing field will be equal. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, I was thinking about athleticism and, and, and getting technique down. Uh, Taylor Mays comes to mind, the old DB from uh, USC back in the day. He wowed at the combine, but – Say it again. He was my former teammate in Oakland. Oh, really? Oh, he played on the he played on the Raiders. Taylor Mays came to Oakland 